fine. Uh, I learned to do line art. So it's been a while since we've done a technique tryout. And since I've been basically bullied into it, today's technique tryout is going to be all about line art. If you're new here, you don't know this, but line art and I have a strange relationship. Um, I, my style doesn't naturally involve line art, though I wish it did. And when I do attempt line art, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But every time without fail, it does give me a mental breakdown but today we're gonna actually try and learn how to make good line art against my better judgment by following a tutorial by an artist whose line work I've just discovered but it is already some of my absolute favorite out there today we're gonna follow a tutorial called how I draw line art tutorial and process in procreate by Chris Aberg. Chris's work is absolutely gorgeous and the aesthetic is stunning um, and I don't know it's just right up my alley and I feel like they're the perfect person to learn from today I will leave links to all of their work and the video I'm following down in the description make sure you go check them out you will love it but yeah I'm gonna start with a sketch first and we'll take it from there if you enjoyed this video or just feel a sense of schadenfreude looking at me struggle with line art make sure to like and subscribe it helps the channel out so much and comment your favorite line art tips down below because uh, your girl could use it and also come say hi on socials all of the links are down in the description below and without much further ado let's dive into another technique tryout featuring Chris Aberg I don't know what to do with my hands for this series Before we get into the lines, here's the sketch I'm working on today. Krissa mentioned how she keeps her sketches super rough and goes straight in with the lines. And while I started with a rough sketch as well, I did feel like I needed a slightly cleaner base. I'm not too good at lines quite yet, and the thought of also cleaning up the sketch while I ink was just way too much for me to bear. So instead, I actually went in and did a second and third pass over the initial super scribbled exploratory sketch. I don't usually film the very first few marks on the canvas just because it feels like too much pressure for what is a super free organic process. So what you saw me start with today was actually a second pass with the brown and red, which is way cleaner than the first pass, by the way. And then I went over it one more time with a pencil brush just to get all the edges in place before inking. I've been doing some heavy shadow work of late, which is pretty much just my natural state at this point, to be honest. And it felt like the whole Kundalini rebirth energy needed to come out. So that's kind of what we're going with here. I did use this image as a character reference for the initial sketch and I've used several references for the snake. I really like the composition so far so let's actually get into the inking. Krissa didn't mention this at the very beginning though she does later but she doesn't actually use a standard inking brush. She actually uses this chalk calligraphy brush that comes in the default Procreate package and honestly that is such a good idea because it has some really lovely textures Obviously, I'm working on Krita, so that exact brush doesn't exist. So instead, I spent an embarrassingly long time testing out a whole bunch of brushes that seem to have a similar texture to see if I can match Krita's brush. The thing I really struggled with was the actual alpha because it all felt too soft edged until the clouds finally parted and I stumbled onto this beauty. This is called the Ink 7 Brush Rough and it is part of the Krita 4 default bundle. The first thing Krita mentioned was that in order to get strong, confident lines, we need to focus on pulling the brush down towards us rather than pushing it away. This makes sense because the fine motor muscles lie on the inside on the palm rather than the outside of the hand. Here, as you can tell, the lines that go down feel a lot straighter and more confident because I'm pulling them towards my hand. And the lines that go upwards are way more curved and not as controlled since those are the push away lines. Since this brush has pressure size dynamics, it means that the harder you press down on it, the thicker the line gets. And what I really like is that with the thinner lines, you get to see more of the texture. 
Krista mentioned the idea of energy and flow in your line work and this extra texture just feels like a bit of a pff, a bit of a sparkle in the lines. Probably the most important lesson for me at least was how line weight varies depending on the placement of the lines. She said that as a rule she likes to place the thickest lines on the outermost edges in the silhouette and all the inside lines are thinner and I'm assuming that's because it helps you separate each composition element from the background, the other place to thicken the lines up is at the intersections and overlap. Another important characteristic of good lines is the varying line weight in the curves. Krissa mentions an analogy of silt building up along the riverbank and that actually really made it make sense to me. The smooth transition between a thick and thin lineway along a curve is a fun way to add movement and flow to our curves. It does take practice though, especially seeing as gradually increasing pen pressure is a fine motor skill in and of itself. I find that if I press too hard too quickly, the brush just kind of randomly increases in radius and creates like a blob in the middle of the line, so uh, that one took a bit of practice. But anyway, as a quick recap, there are four important things to keep in mind when we dive into the actual sketch. First, we need to find a brush that has a bit of texture to give us that really nice nuanced line. Second, we need to get used to the idea of pulling the lines towards us rather than pushing it away so we can have nice confident lines. Number three is to place thick lines at the silhouette and at points of overlap or intersection and thinner lines within the silhouette. And the fourth thing to remember is to use line weight variations to add movement and character to our curves. When it came to the inking demo in their video, probably the most profound thing that Chris mentioned is that the inking process is still very much an exploratory phase. Like she's still going around making decisions about which lines get inked, still discovering where and how the lines will be placed. I don't know about you, but to me, this was actually really reassuring because for some reason, my mind was convinced that people who do line art regularly already know exactly where and how their lines are going to be put down. In retrospect, that is a silly notion because literally no one ever plans that well or to such minute detail, but I guess because of how confident some of the line art looks, I just couldn't fathom that it could involve so much exploration and room for unplanned choices. Krista also suggests starting thin and then building up thickness, which again, in retrospect, is such an obviously smart way to do it, but for some reason I felt like the thickness of the lines must be put down perfectly in one go and then never touched ever again. Honestly, I think that was probably the most daunting part of the line art process for me and it is probably why I've avoided learning it is because I felt like I had to get it right on the first pass. However, working through this tutorial with Krissa, I definitely felt a sense of relief just because it feels like permission to take all the time and as many passes as I need to get a nice result, you know? And I feel like that is what a good tutorial does. It's not just about a step-by-step -step instructional, a good tutorial would actually encourage you to go out there and experiment. Oh, one practical tip she mentioned is to first put down the outer silhouette lines and then go into the details. To start as zoomed out as possible and once the big shapes are inked, only then go in and look at the little details. This was an especially helpful tip when I was doing the snake because as you can clearly tell, there is a lot of detail in there. However, just by putting down the outline, it kind of set a bar for the maximum line thickness because remember the inside lines need to be thinner. I think this actually ends up giving you a much cleaner and more dynamic look because the inner detail lines aren't competing with the silhouette lines on the outside. It just feels less messy. And more importantly, having that silhouette in place really gave me a starting point, whereas without that initial boundary, I would have felt way too overwhelmed by just how many scales there are and wouldn't be able to figure out where to start. 
I don't want to spoil the entire tutorial for you guys because honestly you should go watch the original. Krissa is an excellent teacher and I promise you learn a lot from them. One final thing I will mention, however, is that my biggest takeaway from this tutorial was that I actually ended up discovering a style of line art that I actually really like. I think this is why I avoided learning to ink properly for the longest time because I was trying to extract inspiration from the kind of line work that is just really not my style. So when I see really clean, really highly refined lines such as in manga and comic book art, while they're absolutely gorgeous and incredibly high quality, they're just not my style. I like my textures and I like stuff that looks organic and hand-drawn, but have Having watched this tutorial by Cressa and tried it myself, I think I've discovered that not all line art has to be perfect with clean and crisp lines. Line art can also be freeform with texture and visible hand of the artist details. And I think this notion has really helped me realize that maybe I've been trying to avoid an entire skill because I assumed there was only one way to do it. And honestly, I never thought I'd say this, but you guys, I think I actually really enjoy line art. Okay, be honest, is the end product just complete trash? I can never tell with my own line art. But thanks so much to Chris and Mo for the wonderful tutorial regardless. I feel like I learned so very much today, not just in terms of physical skill, but also in terms of how to approach line art mentally. Like I said, I'll leave a link to this tutorial and all of Chris's work down in the description. Make sure you go check them out and show them some extra love for me. And since you're in the mood for some extra love make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button one like equals one get well soon swish because this line art tutorial wiped me out and also if you have any other tips on how to draw better line art make sure you leave them down below i would super appreciate it quick reminder that my brush kit for photoshop and chris art are now available on patreon and gumroad um and if you just want to come say hi on discord the server is linked down below okay we've all been through enough for one day so thank you so so much for hanging out with me i really hope you've enjoyed it as much as i have if you've enjoyed this technique tryout video and want to watch more of it i'll leave the technique tryout playlist down here make sure you check it out feel free to binge watch it you'll love every single one but yeah that's about all i have to say today so i'll see you guys on the next one bye